Hey everybody, how's it going? So one of the things I've mentioned in a few past videos is that there's this misconception that while Apple isn't the best company when it comes to right to repair, that if you simply don't buy their products, that you'll be free, that the right to repair problem is solved because you're buying from another company. And I wish this was the case. And as I've gone over many of these videos, whether we're talking about the military, whether we're talking about the medical field, whether we're talking about the agricultural field, the automotive field, home appliances, virtually every company in every industry has taken up practices that are against you fixing your own stuff. I just thought I'd share a couple of them that some of PU have sent me today. So one person was talking to me about some, some printer. And I thought, well, you know, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, the, the, not saying it's right that printer manufacturers try to keep you from fixing your printer. But I did think it was a little, you know, again, a printer, you can get a printer for like a hundred bucks, who cares? Uh, and then I, so I read this, unable to purchase KNF negative pressure pumps for repairing a CET Q5 1000 negative pressure ink system. CET Color specifically has agreements with KNF to prevent direct purchase of the necessary part. The part is considered a consumable and will usually fail two times a year. There are four of them, two primaries and two backups. And I realized just how ignorant I was. After a very quick Google search, realized that this printer is used $69,000. You can't buy a basic part. Remember in the medical interview video where someone had a $35,000 operating table, had a bad $1,000 motor just for reclining it. Got to buy a new operating table, man. Sorry. Uh, another one that was interesting to me was someone sent me an example of a PS5 controller that I wanted to share with you. So this is from, this is a Sony example. And this is an interesting channel you should check out. They've got some repair videos on it. My mate Vince, and he's, you know, doing his measurements. And they, they come to the idea that perhaps there's a problem with this dialogue chip over here. And I wanted to read the uh, reply that a viewer of mine named Rob, thank you, Rob, for sending this to me, got from the company when he tried to get this chip. Again, this is not Apple, not, this, this isn't, this is a game console. Been trying to source a DA9087 and QFM package for repairing PlayStation 5 controllers, and I've been unable through Element 14 and RS. Can you provide me with a list of distributors for this component? From Rob. Hit the response. Hello, Robert. Dialogue have passed your inquiry below. We are Cedar Technologies and the representative for Dialogue, writing Nordic, UK, Baltics, and Poland regions. The part is not listed in the current price list and looks to be a proprietary device for a specific customer. We therefore suggest to go via repair service or PlayStation. Thank you and kind regards. So he wants to get a power chip to be able to fix the controller, and he can't buy it because the company is not allowed to sell to him. Sound familiar? Next, automakers. So there was a video I did on my channel about Tesla, which is a notoriously anti-right to repair co consumer car manufacturer here, and it says Tesla, my video is Tesla detects unauthorized modifications after a software update. Now, Rich Rebuilds goes over a lot of stuff on his channel about uh, anti-right to repair in the car world. And many people will say, don't buy that brand. Problem solved. What they don't realize is the direction that every car manufacturer is going in right now, besides just them. The reason I bring this up is because if we make it look like it is simply only one company that's the problem, it gives the opposition a really good argument to say, just don't buy that one company and it's solved allows them to deflect from the fact that this anti-repair cancer is growing everywhere. So when it comes to automotive, you may have your, okay, what, what, what am I talking about? Well, it, when the Massachusetts, when they did an automotive right to repair bill so that independent mechanics would still be able to hook up into the car, get access to the information that they need to fix it, diagnostic codes, all that type of stuff, there were a bunch of people that lobbied against the bill. So you have over here, General Motors, Toyota, Ford, Honda, and Nissan. GM is an iconic American brand. They were responsible for like Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Chevy, Cadillac, GMC, uh, a bunch of others that I can't remember at this point in time. Toyota, Ford, Honda, Nissan, GM. Some of the large car manufacturers in the world, worldwide, selling millions and millions and millions of vehicles. And they spent a combined over $25 million to try and convince people of the following. 20 million. I think my math is bad there. I need to get myself some lunch, but you get the point. Let me play you what it was that they uh, put out there into the world. If question one passes in Massachusetts, anyone could access the most personal data stored in your vehicle. Domestic violence advocates say a sexual predator could use the data to stalk their victims. Pinpoint exactly where you are whether you are alone, even take control of your vehicle. 
vote no on one. Keep your data safe. GM, Toyota, Ford, Honda, Nissan put millions of dollars into creating these advertisements and flooding the airwaves with them last year. Do you think that this is not something that is going to spread to normal car manufacturers if this is the type of rhetoric that they're using, if this is the amount of lying to the consumer that they're willing to do to influence public opinion over something as basic as a independent mechanic being able to get access to diagnostic codes? This is horrible. And they had other commercials, too, that I can't show you because they took them all down. So in my video, I archived two of them. And when I spoke to Brian Hickey of Hickey Associates, he had said that you should expect manufacturers to make up as much BS as they can because the fine and the retraction they're going to have to issue is very minimal in contrast to the amount of money that they will save if a bill like this doesn't get passed and they can have the dealer do all the repairs. So they don't care. They'll make up as much as they want. And the moment that the campaign is done to try and minimize the amount of blowback, they will remove all these campaigns from the internet. You're not going to find that commercial anywhere on YouTube. On tele You're not going to find an archived copy of this unless you find someone like me that was watching them during the time and recording them. And there were many more like this that I unfortunately did not take the time to record. Automakers are more than happy, iconic Japanese automakers and iconic American automakers, to get you to believe that you're going to be raped or beaten in a parking lot if an independent mechanic is able to fix your car. Every company in every industry at some point, has had this cancer growing inside of them. And it's up to us to try and root that cancer out. But it requires that rather than us doing this constant infighting on brands and like, you know, the LG people laughing at the Apple people, the Apple people laughing at the LG people, the GM people, I mean, the Chevy people laughing at the Ford people, the Ford people laughing at the Chevy people, because that, by the way, is a... I've just gotten into driving, but I realized there's like an intense holy war between the Chevy and the Ford people. All these little holy wars among the brands, at some point... We have to come together and realize that every single one of these companies is doing the same shit and not let it become some sort of culture war or brand war, but rather become a users that want to fix their stuff versus list of companies that don't. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a fan of Apple. I don't like Apple. I don't like how they treat their customers. And as an Apple repair shop owner, I can specifically cite many of their failures because I work on their products exclusively. And I'm not going to shy away from any of the stuff that I've said on this channel with regards to their products because it's demonstrably true when I bring up design flaws and failures. It's, it's obvious. But does that mean that if I go to LG that they're going to give me a schematic for a V60 if I need to do data recovery for a customer? Of course not. I'm going to have to rely on some pirated ZXW tool shit in order to be able to do that because LG is never in a million years going to supply me a schematic for a phone that they made, even if they're not in this the cell phone manufacturing market anymore. LG has announced publicly that they're going to be stepping out of the smartphone market. And I still today, if I email them, if I were willing to pay, couldn't get a schematic. Every company does this. And I just think it's important to have that reminder there that this is not just about Apple because it's something that's going to come up in the comments over and over again. This is about one company. And it's not. I bring up the example that I'm familiar with where I know what I'm saying is factually correct and is supported by the facts and the thousands of machines that I've seen on a regular basis. But it doesn't mean that other companies are doing some of the same shit. Or if not, even admittedly worse. Because again, at the end of the day, Apple has done all sorts of horrible shit. They have never, and I'll, I will give Tim Cook credit for this. And by the way, thank you, Tim Cook, for this. They have never put millions of dollars into a smear campaign implying that if Lewis fixes your device, you'll be raped in a parking lot. All the stuff I say about Apple, they are way more fucked up and out of control than consumer electronics stuff. But uh, I'll let that... Let the video end on that note. Uh, by the way, for those of you who didn't realize, there is actually a black kitten in my lap. Did you notice that? This is Blackberry. She's my kitty. I love her so much. She's so cute. She sits here while I do my videos. She's the most adorable little kitty on earth, isn't she? You're so cute, Blackberry. I know. I know, girl. You're so cute. Don't bite the... God damn. She's trying to bite the... No. No. No biting microphone. No biting microphone. Like my Audio Technica too. All right, see y'all later.